Hey, this is Rob Unspock, and welcome back to another edition of eHeroes. Now, I know a lot of entrepreneurs. I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs who have shitty marketing. You know, they, they think this offer that they have is great, but I'm going to bring in an expert. His name's Adam Urbanski, and he's going to help you fix your broken offer and possibly help you build a six-figure business in 12 weeks or less. So welcome, Adam, and, and thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. I had no idea this is what we are doing today, but hey, why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, it's, it's just shitty offers and multiple your shitty offers and, and six and seven and, figures. And 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 honestly, I I think there's a lot of people out there that rely on you know. And I'm going back. I'm going back some time to yellow pages in newspapers. And people, most people are like the younger generation are going, huh? What's a yellow page? Whatever. But you know, these reps would come to you and say, hey, run this ad. You're going to get lots of business. But the offer sucks so bad. All you did was shell out $300 a month to the phone company or to you know, Yellow Pages or the newspaper. You got zero business. Yep. And it wasn't until I learned marketing, you know, because prior to me being this, this awesome guy that I am, I had a carpet cleaning business. And, uh, you know, I, I experienced all this crappy offers. Yep. So, you know, Basically, I switched it up and I said, look, free room of carpet cleaning. And um, I focused on one type of client, the homeowner. All my competitors complained because I'm getting all this business giving away free rooms of carpet cleaning. And, and they said they couldn't compete. So eventually they petitioned uh, these, the newspaper to kick me out. <laughs> so I couldn't run that offer anymore. <laughs> so funny. You know, I, uh, I've had some of the different niche markets for my training. And one of the niches I was in for a while, pure by accident, because my kid need, needed braces, actually both of my kids. And I'm talking to this orthodontist. <clears throat> and there are a few interesting things, you know. So I'm like, well, I see you've got an ad in this local newspaper. How is it working? And she looks at me and goes like, well, frankly, I have no idea. I'm like, well, <laughs> I, knew, I knew that you had no idea. I'm like, well, why do you do this? Well, because, you know, all our, you know, like competitors, all of that's, that's what you do. You go to a local newspaper place and that. So I'm like, well, would you like some help with this? Now, here's an interesting thing. Both of, both of those doctors uh, are board certified practitioners. Just right away, I had no idea what it means. And then out of like tens of thousands of orthodontists in the United States, this is now about 15 years ago, there were only about like 300 of them that were board certified. It's a big deal. But when you say board certified to a, to a man mortal like me, do I know what it means? I have no idea what it means, right? Both of them MBAs, again, highly educated with years of expertise. And I'm listening to all of this. I'm like, all right, would you like some support with this advertising slash marketing thing? And they were like, well, yeah, we're sort of looking at it. You would love some support. So I came up with an ad, uh, kind of a good traditional consumer's report ad, right? Don't hire an orthodontist until you read this first type of thing. Right. And I, I showed it to them and they go like, well, we, 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 we can't do this. I'm like, well, why not? Well, it has now no our name and it doesn't have our you know practice. It doesn't, it's like whatever. And plus it's like something, they came up with some of the things I said, listen, let me run this ad for you. I'll pay for it. You, you do your own thing. I'll place this ad. And if it ends up working out, just give me a percentage out of this. You know, and <laughs> the minute that ad hit, they were on the phone going like, we don't know what's going on, but the phone is ringing off the hook. Then the next thing that happened is they actually, um, like the board of orthodontists or whatever, came after them and they said, well, you're making other orthodontists look bad with your report. <laughs> and you need to like really take this or we're going to take some actions. So I said, well, what are you going to do? And they looked at me and said, we don't want to take it down. It's working too well. And it's all true that we are sharing. I'm like, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and all I did is I went in there and did a little bit of homework and digging uh, about what's actually going on. Uh, interesting thing. So a lot of at that time, a lot of orthodontists would say that they, that they recycle. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, like that would be like, you know, in, in your documentations as a patient, you would sign in and say, you're OK with your orthodontist recycling. And you think like, wow, this is really, my, they're so conscientious about environment. What it really meant is that they take some parts of the wiring, some parts of the wiring, they sterilize it, and they put it into another patient's mouth. 
And out of a 6,000, you know, orthodontics treatment deal, it saves the doctor like 300 bucks <laughs> over the course of, and I'm like, if patients really knew this, they read the word recycling in the paperwork and they would run. They're like, ah, that's just gross. <laughs> Here's an extra 300 bucks to give you fresh freaking wiring, right? Uh, so little things like this. But anyway, the whole idea here is the offer was just a really powerful offer. Right. Right. It was something that people wanted to know. No one, no one cared that these doctors, you know, what their names were. No one even cared what the address was, how fancy the office was, you know, if they were board certified or not. All of that came later. To start with, everybody was looking like, what's in it for me? How do I even make a decision to, you know, which orthodontist do I go to? What to look for? What's important for me? Right. Uh, and no one shares this info, right? right? So anyway, yeah, what, I got ahead of myself here. You're sharing your carpet story business and free room cleaning. I'm just, you know, if, if we could just teach people that it really isn't about them, it's about who they want to do business with them. Right. And all you got to do is just put something in front of your audience that makes them go like, yeah, that's me. That's me. Talk to me more. Preach some more. I'm, I'm listening, right? This uh, and, is and the funny thing was, is that the free room of carpet cleaning was for a small area in their house, like a 10 by 10, so 100 square feet. And, and my prices were probably double what my competitors were. But I was getting all this business. And, and we made probably $100,000 within that 12-week period when after running this ad and referrals upon referrals. And so my competitors were like crying because they're not getting any business anymore because they felt that I was giving unfair advantage. <laughs> you were. Well, you know, and, and it's called educating thing is, yourself on what works. They started copying my ads, but they made a crucial mistake is that they didn't look at what I was actually doing and how I was doing it. And my ads were saying homeowners only or, you know, um, so I didn't do apartments. I didn't do, you know, they didn't put that, that, that wording in there. So they were getting all kinds of apartment complexes flooding their calls. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and once you put that ad out, you got to honor it. So a lot of these carpet cleaners were going broke because they were giving a lot free stuff that, they didn't know how to translate into business. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, you know, I had that cleaning business for, for 20 years. I sold it. Uh, I've been, I've been teaching now uh, entrepreneurs for almost a decade. And uh, it's just a lot of the same concepts, a lot of the same offers that I used cleaning. I'm using now. That's just yep. a different offer. It's just, yep. you know, different wording. And, and, That's all it is, you know. So I think good old Dan Kennedy said it, or maybe it was someone else. It's like marketing is marketing is marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, everything translates into communication and relationship with other human beings. So again, I, I go back. I put, did a scored a TV interview early in my career, like 2003, I think, when I was just kind of uh, budding coaching consulting business. And back then it was all about marketing your business on the internet. Like, you know, is this internet thing a scam? Can you make money on the internet? And man, they did this three, three minute special and made me like the featured star uh, right next to someone who represented Better Business Bureau. So it literally looked like a commercial for my business that I was like this up and up and, you know, against all the scammers. And I look at it today, I'm like, wow, what was my core message? Like, it's all built on relationships. I know it's internet. But it's just the freaking communication platform. People don't make money online. They make money because they have a solid business. They do make money through online communication and marketing, but that's about it. Yeah, I mean, my even my first book, which was Share, which was all about social media, you know, it was all about telling your story, building up that relationship, you know, yep. communicating with people. And, and, you know, now that I had these other books, this whole series of sarcasm books, people were like, well, that doesn't really build up people. That doesn't communicate. Yes, it does. But it's it's going after the niche of people that I really want to deal with. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people that they, they don't understand that. They think, well, you know, if they breathe and they have money, they should be my client. No, nope. no, not no. even close. No. So, you know, I love you. And I, this is why I recorded this video. I was like, you, if the book arrived and I started going to the books, you sent me, I think, four copies, four different ones. Right. Yeah. And I started reading. And it like arrived, I think, on Thursday or Friday. And I was like, I don't want to message him that I got it. 
because I, I had this idea and I didn't want to do it over the weekend. And sure enough, like you messaged me, like, hey, did you get the books? I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't want to do it. I guess I'm grateful for your gift, but I've got this idea. Uh, and, and surely, you know, I wanted to record this video because what's so great about, you know, your books in this, this uh, Rob Versus series, it really isn't about giving specific advice, which is so funny. Like there's so much free information out there. Right. But this is a brilliant personality filtering test. And I, like in my business, I truly believe that one of the fundamentals, uh, fundamental things that makes us different and allows us to actually create successful clients is we're very good at, at, at filtering who we let through. Mm -hmm. Like I make insane propositions and insane offers and guarantees, but it's not for everyone. Like right. I'm looking for, hey, what do you already have in place? But I'm also looking at this personality because like in my business, yeah, I am a drill sergeant. I am an asshole. Uh, I'm not calling you with things. And if you've got fragile feelings and I have to, you know, tiptoe around your fragile feelings that I can do the work that I need to do with you. You got to go and get your pills first and get straightened out with your other doctors. You know, once you have that shit figured out, then you can come to me and we'll figure out your business. Right. Lots of people are very fragile mentally. Yeah. And then on the top of this, you know, they try to build a business and, um, uh, Look, business is someone's baby, but fortunately, it's not a human creature thing. So I can tell you this, your baby is ugly and it stinks. And people don't like when I tell them this. I'm like, it, right now it's ugly and it stinks. Mm -hmm. It can grow up into a beautiful teenager and an amazing adult, but it needs some work. So if you want to go around insisting that your baby is you know, beautiful uh, and it's not, then I can't help you. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's... And and I think that's one of the reasons why I transitioned from having books where it taught, granted, they taught information, they taught stuff that people will need to make better choices in their business. But a lot of people would read the books and they're like, okay, well, that's nice. And then, you know, they throw the book away or give it to someone there. I had someone even take a picture and say, hey, look, it's propping up my desk. And I'm like, you asshole. You know, the whole thing about the Rob Bursa series is it gets them to laugh. It gets them to appreciate the situation that I might be in at that time. And there might be a little life lesson afterwards, but everybody can relate to those stories better in the Rob Bursa series than if I made other books that were just not yep. funny. Yep. And a, and, a, and, a, and a great part for me, at least, is that People will relate from both sides. So some people will see themselves as the offending side in the book, right? Uh, meaning the ones you are against. Yeah. And they kind of go like, well, I don't want to work with this a-hole. He's, like, he's so rude. So rude. Right? And then on the flip side, there are folks who go like, man, this guy's got some cojones. Kudos to him. Man, I wish I could say that. Or I wish I did this. Oh, man, I feel exactly the same way. This, this is my guy. Uh, I, I share this, again, with people all the time. Look. The only real differentiator in, in expertise or service-based businesses is our personalities. Mm -hmm. And those who have uh, the courage to dial up the personality by the factor of 10 um, make a big difference. Mm -hmm. You know, many, many years ago, I, I uh, was uh, writing an article on, on uh, kind of differentiating yourself in, in business. And I, I came across something about Circus de Soleil. And then it led me to uh, like how things are done in TV and the uh, theatrical performances. And the thing is that you've got to either uh, make something, miniaturize it or ex and make it super big. Right. That's what works because like normal size in media, in performance, in theater, in, in circus, this way, it doesn't work. So you've got to make it either super big, exaggerated or exaggerated by making it very minuscule. So people kind of go like, you know, either way it works for personality, I think. You've got to dial it up. You've got to make it huge because just being across normal, it, it's, you know, you've done, you, you do work on, on audio and video. You know that if you just come across your normal paced self, that is the worst thing to watch and listen right. because, you know, the media of video and audio in distance tempers it off. So we, we come across as having zero energy, right? So you got to really dial it up and speed it up a little bit and come across. And then you sort of start coming across as normal. 
Yeah, so it, this it, whole factor of dialing up personality that makes you stand up. And if someone doesn't have the cojones to do this, it's hard for them to distinguish themselves. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, most of my clients are probably in the, in the age range of 40 to 65. And I, I say that because they're the ones who I think appreciate sarcasm so much better. The younger mm. people, they don't get it. They're like, are you serious? What did you just say to me? What? And, and it just it just goes past them. And, and, and or they just they automatically think, man, that guy is just an old curmudgeon, you know. And so I don't even focus on that that demographic. And, and I know that there's a lot of people out there that will say, well, Rob, you have to be on TikTok. You will never catch me on TikTok, ever. I it just it's not a platform that I ever see myself on. It's not a platform that my clients get on, and uh, and it might be one of these, you know, oh wow, you know, everybody's on TikTok. I don't care if everybody's smoking a joint. It's not something I'm going to do. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so I, 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 I don't even know how to touch that one. You know, so <laughs> when when Snapchat came up a few years back, I was briefly on it. Um, you know, maybe three or four months, and uh, it was a shitload of work. Uh, I got I got a few good. Actually, I got some really good business out of this. That that has definitely more than uh, was worth my while to do this. But again. Um, I, my demographic is slightly older, maybe maybe not quite uh, on the upper age, an upper end of what you're targeting, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, will I find some of them on TikTok? Will that will TikTok, you know, give me some fresh visibility? Or could same thing with Clubhouse? I mean, Clubhouse was all over the place a few months ago. People were like sleepless for a week, like on Club. <laughs> I was all the time. I went in there, you know, I spent an hour, I think, poking around. I'm like, yeah, it's phenomenal. Lots of opportunity. Not my place, not my time right now. I've got other places to be. So I think the message for, for you know, our, our listeners, receivers of this is just get focused. Yeah. You know, get focused on, on one specific thing, get really good at it. Um, and until you have that one thing figured out, and well systematized and organized don't touch another thing because you just you can't right right? and and i I get this thing about don't put all your eggs in one basket etc etc but at at the beginning you might have to because you cannot carry multiple baskets right and you and people try to like this tactic and that tactic and i should do do this i'm doing this and i'm launching that i'm like what are you actually trying to accomplish right you know when i take on a client you know one of the things that i do is is not to overwhelm them I'll say, well, Rob, what about this? What about Facebook? What about LinkedIn? What about, you know, you know, ads everywhere else? And I said, yeah, we can do all that, but that's going to overwhelm you. So we're going to focus on one thing at a time until we see the numbers coming in. Then we'll jump into the next thing and then add and add. I said, but if we do everything all at once, you are going to get slammed or you're going to just get overwhelmed to the point where, you know, you're going to fire us. And um, I, I just find that it's just easier to focus on one thing at a time. So I'm curious uh, because you know we 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 have very almost identical approach from from that perspective, right? Um, less is more. But I'm curious, like, what are you discovering in conversations with clients? Because I think someone listening to this goes, "Well, if I promise people less, or if I tell them to do less, and they want to do all of this, and they will go somewhere else." Uh, that's not what I'm finding. Obviously, that's not what you're finding. So. How do you handle this in conversations? I'm kind of, I'm interviewing the interviewer here. <laughs> you know, one of the, we, we've all heard the expression or the, the acronym KISS, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Yep. Uh, I call it keep it stupidly simple. Because mm-hmm. if your processes are so complicated that, you know, you don't even understand what they're doing. Or like with these people with, you know, these, these, these funnels out there, wazoo, when one of those funnels breaks, how are you going to fix it? How are you going to know what, what to do to fix it? So I'm not a big funnel believer. I, I can't stand funnels. I, I, I think they're growth. They're, they're, they're well, you know, so here's things. the thing. Um. <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> I, I try to keep everything that they understand it, that they know what I'm doing. I keep them informed. And, uh, you know, to me, it's just, I, I think we overcomplicate everything. 
I am, yeah. I am I'm one hundred percent with you on that one. So here's the thing: I don't know if we can curse on your on your uh, show. Go ahead. Or not. Yes, go, go. But, use uh, use all you, the words. <laughs> if you happen to look up the domain name called fuckthefunnels.com, it's going to point you directly towards yours truly. <laughs> all right. Uh, at one point, I was going to make T-shirts that say that, but I, you know, I never got around to it. Here's the thing. What fascinates me is that I'm not necessarily per se against funnels. I am against funnels as people understand them today. Right. Everything in marketing is a funnel. If someone and I, and I also am against guys who come and say, "Well, you don't need any funnels. There's no funnels." And I'm like, "Why are you? Or, or like, you don't need any content to uh, to to be in business." And I'm like, "Why are you preaching this to your followers? You're doing them such a disservice because you actually took them through the funnel." Right, you took them through a free piece of content somewhere that position you as an authority. You landed them in maybe like some sort of community, like a Facebook group. Right. Um, you got them to download something from your or have a messenger conversation, and then you got them on a call before they bought from you. So there is a funnel. Well, there's, just, there, yeah, there there are simplified yeah. funnels, and and most people don't think Look of at, those as funnels. They think of just. You know, exactly. So what I'm against is the funnel. Like, well, here's a headline, and and from this you're getting them the the uh, what what is it called that like explodes people tripwire, right? Trip I love wire, that. Right. Love that term from the very get go. It's like seriously tripwire as a phenomenal name for something. Let's just blow people up into bits and pieces, and then see if they want to pay me more money. But you know, the con conceptually it works. It's a beautiful way to scale a company. But my 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 thing about the funnel hacking is like if you try to copy someone's headlines right. and bullet points and worry whether you know green is better than red for your push button thingy and meanwhile if you lend a conversation with a potential client belly to belly you can't number one you don't even know who you want to meet belly to belly number right. two if you happen to meet them you can't possibly articulate uh what kind of value proposition you have for them person to person toe to toe handshake to handshake if you can't do that in a conversation what the F makes you think that sending them through a complex multi-step technology driven gizmo is going to actually make them throw a credit card at you. Right. And once that funnel is broken and they get halfway through it and they're like, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Well, you just lost their business. <laughs> so, you know, I've got, I've got seven people coming to me every single month and, uh, but I can't handle the traffic. I'm going to put them through the funnel to filter them. Yeah, that it, that really sounds smart. You should do that. Yeah. It, anyway, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, and and when you tell people, hey, I I just want to simplify your operation, they just look at you like you know a deer caught in the headlights. Well, that's not what the other guy. I don't give it. You're coming to me, aren't you? Yeah. No, you know, and, and then then they want to compare you to everybody out there that's you know doing these thirty nine ninety five deals and. I'm like, no, I'm not interested. And again, there is room for everything. I, I truly believe that, you know, there is room for everything, but you've got to get clear ultimately on um, to start with, you know, what's yeah. your, I call it my fastest path to, what do you actually want to accomplish? Like get clear on what you want to accomplish. You know, I, I will misquote it horribly and it's from uh, a Hindu uh, Buddhism book, but essentially what happens is what stops us from achieving our true goals uh, is not it's not major obstacles. It's not lack of things. It's that the path to smaller, easier goals is more clear and immediately available. Mm -hmm. Right. So look, doing the work that needs to be done. Again, we talked about offers and scaling and growing businesses. Right. Um, my predominant thing that I work with clients on the most is they come in and they usually pre six figures. And we can get them to multiple six figures rapidly, like within weeks, and then to seven figures very quickly. Uh, but usually to like mid six, mid six figures, so 400, 600, 750000 dollars a year. Often they have no websites, right? They have no um, they have no lists. I don't focus on building lists. Um, that they're they're not well recognized if at all. They don't spend money on, on advertising, they don't have big teams in place. Uh, it's just really focusing on like, hey, I want to accelerate my revenue. What's the fastest path to get there? Well, the fastest path to get there is doing the hard work right. of really understanding your market, really digging deep into this. Like, hey, my baby ain't that bad, ain't good looking right now. It doesn't smell that good. 
So let's make sure that this baby is dressed up differently. And, and it, it, you know, it's actually desirable in the marketplace. Horrible metaphor, by the way, but I started with it, so I'm going to continue. Uh, and then, but, but then the resistance is that's hard work. That's got a question, you know, because we come in with like assumptions. Well, what I'm doing is good. I want to sell this. I want to sell that. But no one wants this. So you've got to start doing things. You've got to do the hard work. That's what stops people from achieving major goals quickly. Right. Uh, and what gets in the way is the easy thing. Well, there's there's a funnel thingy. Or, you know, I can do, I don't even know what people do, but it's like, I can sell this ebook, or I can do this. Or, you know, I should start a membership site. You know, and the membership sites for seven dollars are really in right now. I'm like, yeah. Do you have a list of a hundred thousand potential buyers to put it in front of, so you start actually making some money you can live on? Because if you don't, you know, you've got your list of seven people. Even if all of them buy your seven dollar membership, you're still screwed. Yeah. So yeah. what's the fastest path to get get clear on this? What really needs to happen to get you to that place? And resist the temptation of following the easier paths, supposedly easier, right? right? The funnel hacking thing. Like, well, go and rep, let's do this funnel thing and let's do a webinar. Yeah, but now you've got to build a funnel. Now you've got to market the webinar. You don't even have people to market right. to. You don't know how to deliver a webinar that actually captures attention, um, indoctrinates people in a way, and makes them and builds a, a huge this natural desire to reach out and, and want to do the next step with you. You have no idea how to do this. So even if, if by some miracle you actually build that funnel and you end up with some people on a webinar, chances are you're just talking them out of doing business with you with your boring story. Like all of that is putting barriers in front of your best potential clients who have no interest in doing any of this. They just want to be helped. So what's the shortest path to getting to, you know, getting some people out there who want to be helped? on a call with you and start doing business with them. And then you can worry about how do I actually leverage this? How do I optimize this? But those are remotely, you know, farther in the future. Yeah. You know, 20 some years ago, my biggest thing was, is, you know, I had this cleaning business that that was going nowhere. I was relying on other people to design my marketing and, and uh, I saw an ad and it was for Joe Polish's uh, Piranha yeah. Marketing Bootcamp in, in Arizona. And this was 1998. And, so I went out and I started learning marketing and I met Dan Kennedy. And I mean, Dan Kennedy was like a hundred years old then. And, you know, <laughs> he died multiple times. I mean, he came back to life. Recently, he was like seriously dying. And now he's back at it. I'm like, this guy is just, you know, yeah. anyway. But yeah, the, 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 it was, it was that, that uh, desire to learn marketing, to, to make my business better, to learn all this stuff that, that made me who I am today. And and I'm uh, yeah, your story is probably very similar. You know, you weren't in carpet cleaning, but you stumbled upon marketing, and 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 now you know you're you're this great hero that everybody looks up to, and you know, and 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 that's that's great and all, but sometimes, you know, I don't want to show people all my superpowers. I want to give them a little bit at a time, because you know they they can't handle it all. Yep. So that actually. Uh, you know, I'll show you something that I discovered. It's, it actually is a, a huge breakthrough if someone gets this. So, like, for, 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 you know, for our audience listening, like, this is definitely this proverbial writer downer. And think about it for a moment, because it has revolutionized my business. Um, uh, you know, so I've been at it for 20 years, and I really only got this through my thick head about five, six years ago. For the first 15 years, you know, of, of doing consulting, coaching, marketing, marketing advisor. It was all about cramming into people's heads. Like, here's how it's all done. Here's what I know. You got to understand all of this. Right. And some people were able to absorb this uh, and deploy it quickly. Most people were not. It was just overwhelm them. Uh, it's just too many options uh, for me because I can, I can take massive amount of information and streamline it to a specific strategy. Mm -hmm. I thought everybody operates the same way. For me... <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm not a one, one tool, one solution type of guy. You know, it, it, your strategy may be slightly unique to other people. Your, your, your development, your deployment is different. Right. Uh, but I, I don't want to make the choice for you. I want to give you options. You make the choice and then I'll help you guide you down that path. So because of that, I was always overwhelming people with too much. And again, five years ago, I had this eureka moment that, what you, if you really want to be of value to your clients, 
give them only what they need to have to take the next step. Mm -hmm. And it really isn't about being stingy. Like, I'll, ask me any questions. I'll, I'll give you the answers. Like, people that join in of my programs, I'm like, look, I've got 20 years of intellectual property locked up in a, in a virtual vault. If you've got questions on something, don't go out there trying to buy another program or whatever. Ask me. Chances are I already have training on this. I'll open it to you. Right. The reason I don't lead with this and I don't put it in front of you because you're going to go studying it. And no amount of studying is going to replace an ounce of implementation. I want you to do what needs to be done right now. And then if you ask about something, my question will be, why do you think you need this right now? Where is this? What are you trying to accomplish? Is this really the right step? Well, what about we do that, right? That is actually going to most likely take you where you want to go faster. So again, the key thing here is give people only what they need to have to take the next step needed to take them closer to the outcome they want to have. Everything else is just our need of like, I understand the complexity. I know what's needed. Let me guide you down those paths. But that's my need of, you know, unleashing my wisdom on someone uh, versus really to be of service. What do you actually really truly need? Let me give you, let me give you that step. Go do that step. And you doing that step will teach you more than studying countless hours of marketing information. Right. And, and, for all those that are listening, I want you to take note because Adam said a very key phrase is guide them down the path. You know, a lot of gurus will shove you down the path and you won't get any value at all out of what they're doing. So, you know, take someone like Adam and, and they're going to hold your hand. They're going to guide you down that path. They're going to show you the right thing. This is exactly what I do, too. Now, sometimes now I'll, I'll put my foot out and purposely trip you because, you know, I think you need to learn a lesson but Adam's going to do it much nicer. I don't think so, but yeah. <laughs> Let's create that impression. I'm slightly nicer. <laughs> slightly nicer. He's got better hair. I mean. Uh, all of that. <laughs> all of that. So, you know, that brings us back to personality, slightly nicer. So, you know, always aware of this, that I'm tiptoeing this line. Um, you know, who are my ideal, ideal clients? And then if I want to broaden my marketing, do I want to do I want to expand that reach and do I need to you know re re recalibrate my message but the truth is you know the Tony Robbins is a great example he's dropping f-bombs every single time he's out there right and why does he do it well shock value but it also filters certain types of clients if you if, if you if you offended by this don't come to my trainings right. so it, it's the same thing I've done this when I used to do live events and like really group large group trainings uh, I would actually talk about this. Like, why do I cast on, 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 and I'm more conscious but, of You know, that, and, and here's the thing. That is your style. Tony's yeah. style didn't used to be that way. I used yeah. to go to his events and he wouldn't curse at all. Yeah. And, you know, to me, I've got a, I've got a number, good number of clients who are really devoted, uh, very religious, uh, and, and they target very, you know, their clients are also very, very, very based in faith. I'm like, dial that up. Yeah. You know, take your, uh, your faith message through the roof, you know, really talk about this all the time because that's who you are. That's going to bring some clients to you. Uh, others will be like, yeah, not my flavor. Great. You would not enjoy doing business with them anyway, right? So how, so, do, people, how yeah. do people get a hold of you? I mean, I mean, granted, besides going to fuck the funnel. <laughs> there you go. So you see, this is another thing. I had a, my moniker used to be a voice of God. <laughs> and uh, I have, because I have, you know, clients that are deeply based in the faith that's, you know, that's kind of offensive. I'm like, after I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, I, I guess, you know, for people that are really that religious, that it offends them. And to me, where it started, I would travel a lot. And some places my internet was crappy. So my team is doing coaching with clients and I would kind of dial in just to kind of be, you know, I want to contribute. I love what I do. I, I want to be there for my clients as much as I can. So I'm dialing from some godforsaken location. My internet isn't working. So I can only do audio versus video. And, you know, there's a conversation going on and outside. Well, <clears throat> here's what you should really do. And they go like, oh, there is a voice of God. And I'm like, well, I'm not a voice of God. So all you got to tape is like, you know, marketing God, and I'm going to display on your computer. Um, but all jokes aside and my um, grandiose narcissism aside, <laughs> the best place, you know, go to uh, fastestpathtocash.club. That's going to bring you to my Facebook group. 
Uh, and all, on honesty, we might let you in. We might not, depending <laughs> on the answers you provide. And if I don't let you in, it's not because I don't like you. It's chances I wouldn't be of value to you. And you'll be just, you know, one of those folks that gets in the group and never comes back. So what's the point? Uh, but that's the best place to find me. You can go to the marketingmentors.com. Uh, my website has been broken for about six years and I'd be promising that we'll fix it. So, I'm, I'm, you know, you're laughing, Rob, but I often tell people like, look, some of those stupid things I do on purpose because of who my clients are. Yeah. And if they come in and they go spend the bazillions of dollars on photo shoots, and then they just drop, you know, 15 grand on this branded website, I'm like, and is that going to get you a single client? Chances are not. Yeah. Because that website will be, need to be completely redesigned because what you're doing right now you're completely clueless of what actually needs to be done in your marketplace. So let's get all of those things first. And when you fix all of those things first, you start realizing all of that trickery, right? The, the, the fancy looks and, and whatever. Yeah, it's helpful, but it's not needed. No, no. And, and you know, we build websites, we do social, we do all this other stuff. And, and you know, I, I, I go to so many websites that are like 20 years old and they still work. And people are like, well, do I need a new website? The other guy said, I need a new website. So well, do you want to what, drop 10 grand on this website? No. Um, no. So, so you know, let's put it somewhere else that's going to actually work for you. And then you can always make look, the decision so I, to I'll get a new website. My, my own bonehead moves. And that's why I sort of like went out of this. Um, so bonehead move. Here it is. You know, I needed to teach myself how to actually do websites that work back in the day. So, for example, put opt-in pages or landing pages together. Mm -hmm. So I've got this phenomenal landing page. Uh, that's all that's on my website was at one point, right? It's like for, for many years, for decade plus. Now, I, uh, and uh, so, so Bonehead moved number one. Uh, and this page literally was converting at about 80%. So 10, eight out of 10 visitors would ask for the resource that I was offering, right? Uh, depending if some traffic came from some whatever weird sources, maybe it was six out of 10. Still phenomenal conversion, right? Then there are tools out there like lead pages and click funnels, and they have all a slick, like, look, so-and-so has got this web model, opt-in model, and so-and-so has got this format. I'm like, all right, let me scrap my clunky 1999 lead page, and let me replace it with one of those fancy templated things. Mm -hmm. I got one out of 10 people to opt in. I'm like, Back to my old thing. Yeah, I don't care that it's old. I don't care that it's mobile, unfriendly. Somehow people actually still use it and it works. Yeah. Then I think of gallivanting through the world. And my team gets messages from people like, well, what does Adam really do? How can we work with Adam? And the website doesn't tell them shit. So they have this brilliant idea. They got to actually build me a website while I'm gone, right? So I come back like five weeks later and go like, well, we built your website. Look at this. I'm like, well. Brilliant. Now, let me show you what just happened in the five weeks that you put this website together. You see, before we were getting this many opt-ins and we had our marketing sequence to them. And now we're getting this many opt-ins. You guys see the difference? Before we were getting nine out of 10. Now we're getting, you know, one out of 20. Do you think that website was really a good move? Well, that'll teach you to go gallivanting through yeah. your won't it? <laughs> and we had some of this conversation prior to getting on air. Um, it's not about vanity metrics. Like no. what actually moves the needle for you? What gets you the result? Again, what's the fastest path to getting with, this is a shameless plug, here we go. Can you guys read that? Fastest path to cash. Uh, I don't even, I'm not even as good as you at marketing books. I wrote one shitty book, uh, but I wrote, <laughs> I wrote it. I wrote, wrote it, 30, 30 of them. <laughs> I wrote, wrote it, published it, and sold first 500 copies in under seven days over 4th of July weekend. So that's my spring to claim, but I've never done it again since. Uh, point being, really, what's your fastest path to whatever? Identify what your goal is, reverse engineer. And usually when you reverse engineer the steps, you will discover that what you need is about three to five main stepping stones, and you're good to go. And everything else is just noise. That's right. Or it's a shiny object that you don't that you don't need. Yep. So, anyway, for all those that uh, are listening and paying attention, I want you to go down the rabbit hole and go gallivanting with Adam and go to his uh, his website, fastestpathtocash.club, and uh, join. Go clubbing, baby. Go <laughs> clubbing, hey? and and join his Facebook group and and uh, hopefully you'll see me there because I'm going to go press the button and join and and uh, if Adam has me. 
And uh, I'm going to, you know. Questionable, but we'll see what we can do. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'll probably get kicked out after about five minutes of sarcasm, but that's okay. Yeah. You know, so <clears throat> I want to thank Adam. I want to thank everybody for listening, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Adios. Thanks for having me.